Hey friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. I wanna show you some updates that has been going on around the homestead and some of the really big updates with the garden and everything. So we're walking on the new walkway. This happened yesterday, so I'm gonna bring you back to yesterday and you can see all that was done there. Originally this walkway was a wooden plank walkway and it was kind of like walking the plank because it was treacherous and dangerous. And what we've decided to do here is make a stone walkway. And it kind of reminds me of my own yellow brick road, except it's gray. It's not yellow because I love boring neutral colors and gray is my favorite color. So what they're doing here is they're tamping down the first layer that is going to make up this walkway it's a fine gravel and they make sure that it's nice and level before they start laying the stones this front area i've talked about before this is going to be where i am going to be growing a lot of perennial flowers there's going to be a lot of greenery in here that's just going to be green all year round one of my goals for my landscaped areas around my house is for it to be easy where I wanna spend the majority of my time outside is on in the garden where we're gonna be growing fruits and vegetables and flowers as well, but more annual flowers, flowers that I'm gonna be planting every year. But these landscaped areas, I really want them to be low maintenance. So a lot of what's gonna be in here are is gonna be greenery and bushes, things that are gonna be green all year round just to keep some nice color. But I do want to invest some of my time and energy in planting a ton of perennial flowers in these beds around the front of the house and around the back of the house. So that's something we're gonna be doing together throughout this next growing season. I need to do a lot more research on growing perennial flowers. That's something that I have not really done any research on. At my previous homestead, there were so many perennial flowers. The previous owner of that house had invested so much time and effort, energy and resources in growing so many beautiful perennials. And that inspired me that I want to do that here. But I need to take a lot of time and do a lot of research <laughs> to do that. So right here, what they're working on is laying out the pattern. Now we had a couple different options on how we could lay the pattern out for this walkway. And we decided to do this, I think it's called a herringbone pattern, but I'm not exactly sure. We could have had all of the bricks running one way, but we decided to add a little bit of dimension and have them go in this herringbone pattern with a border on the outside. Now there are, when we were talking to our landscaper, he was saying that to have them all run one direction is a more modern style. And we thought that we would go a little bit more traditional and have them in this more traditional pattern. And originally the plan was to have the center of this walkway be light gray, and then the border on the outside be this kind of charcoal -y color. And as I was watching this be built, because I'm inside working away, I'm actually making strawberry jam. We make strawberry jam, strawberry lemonade concentrate, and strawberry granola while they're working on this outside area. And I was just not loving this two-toned because I like things that are very neutral. And I wanted, there's gonna be so much other stuff going on. I kind of wanted the walkway to disappear. So I do talk to them and we end up changing the color, this border, we end up just having it all be the exact same color. And what they decided to do was go ahead and just lay this out anyway, because they wanted to have it laid out and then they are gonna replace the dark with the light color. Now you can see these chickens that are hanging out with the landscapers on the front porch. We do not currently have a chicken run for the chickens. They free range on the property, which is, Free range is a very popular term when it comes to chickens, and it's a very beautiful and romantic idea. And I love having them free range, except I don't at the same time. My, here they come. <laughs> My chickens, their favorite spot to hang out has been, since we moved to this property, has been on my front porch, which is fun because they're close, but it's also not fun because they make a mess. And on this homestead, we are not going to have free range chickens for the rest of the life we live on this homestead. 
what we're going to do is build a run for them. The reason I don't want free range chickens is because they make a mess and I would like my front deck to be clean when people come over or when someone drops off a package or whatever it might be. My deck was pretty embarrassing. I actually spent this last weekend cleaning it and it's now clean, even though the chickens do not have a run yet, but I'm going to do a better job at staying on top of it. The chickens don't actually spend as much time on the front deck since this landscape project has gone underway because there's so many more areas for them that have been disrupted with the trucks and tractors and the different projects that have been going on that the chickens have been enjoying actually going and exploring my whole property, which has been great because it, <laughs> the property is big enough that I don't notice their messes as much when they are not hanging out for half the day on my front porch. So we are going to be building them a run where they're going to be enclosed. And I know that that's not as popular in necessarily the homestead community. A lot of people either have them, their chickens in mobile tractors or they free range them, but that's just not how it's going to work best for us on our homestead. And so I hope that's encouraging to you that figure out what works best for you on your homestead and then go with that. We at the last homestead had built a pretty large run for them about six or seven months before we moved. And that was my favorite way to have chickens. And so that's what we're going to implement here on this homestead once we have a little bit more time. But for now, they are free ranging. Here they come again. Another reason I don't want them free ranging is because I was mentioning we're going to be planting so many perennials around the homestead and we are putting effort into making this look really pretty. Chickens love to scratch and dig and I don't want them scratching and digging up my perennial plants. I also don't want them in my garden and it'll be a while before we have a fence around the garden. So one thing that I am probably going to end up doing this year is probably sharing some of my produce with the local deer that are in the area because I don't have a fence. So that is our chicken update. So you can see this walkway is coming together really nicely. And now we have the gray on gr the light gray with the light gray. We don't have a two-toned walkway anymore. And I'm just thrilled with how this is turning out. I feel like I have my very own yellow brick road, <laughs> except it is not yellow. Like I said, it's gray. I love neutrals and boring colors. So on this day, I am inside working away. I am making strawberry jam, strawberry lemonade concentrate, and strawberry granola. The previous owner on this property had planted, there are, I think there's six or seven raised beds in the previous owner's garden where he had planted tons of strawberries. His passion was strawberries. And I am so grateful for that because I was able to benefit from that and harvest six one gallon bags of strawberries, which is pretty incredible because strawberries are Josh and I's favorite fruit. And to be able to harvest that much fruit that is our favorite from our own property is a pretty cool experience. I was also able to gift each of the landscapers a jar of jam on this day because they deserved it. You can see how rainy it is out there and they worked so hard. I am just so grateful for their attention to detail. Every single thing that they have touched on this project so far has just turned out phenomenal. So I am absolutely thrilled with how this turned out. It is going to be much safer. It's so beautiful. I'm so happy about it. And I am just so excited about how this front is coming together. To be honest, I wasn't so sure about the dry riverbed, but I am loving it. The attention to detail too of putting the rocks right up to the walkway I think is really nice. And putting the rocks, they, they were very precise when they put the rocks around the big rock. And same with over here. I think this looks so, so good. Now all of the irrigation is dry, is in, along with some electrical for some lighting. All of that is in now for the garden as well. And then a huge, huge thing that's happening today is all the lumber is being delivered for the raised beds, which means we are gonna start building the raised beds. 
We originally were going to build 12 raised beds, but we have decided to go ahead and build 20. So this is enough lumber here for half the beds. He is going to go and pick up the rest of the lumber after he drops this off. So we are going to have 20 raised beds that are 16 feet by four feet. And that is the same size raised beds as we had at the last property. At the last property, we had 16 of them. So we are gonna have a few more here than we did at the last house. Our original plan was to use rough cut cedar, but that was just not available. That's what we had with the last raised bed. So this is cedar that is a smooth cut. Luis is going through and he is remarking where the beds are gonna be just to double triple check to make sure they're all going to be in the correct spot so what you just saw there was them unloading the first load and they had to go get a second load because there are going to be 20 raised beds we went from having 12 to now 20 so it's going to be really big while we're out here it is like 50 degrees out and so beautifully sunny i want to show you an update on the garden here this is where the previous owner had his garden and I am so blessed that it was here because I was able to plant my garlic and I don't know if you can see but garlic is coming up all in this bed so hopefully coming this July we will be harvesting garlic out of this bed which is awesome so this lumber is cedar here and that is just gonna be the best stuff long term all of the white posts, that's where each one of the 20 raised beds is. That's where the irrigation system is roughed in currently. We have these hydrants here too, so that in the future, when we want to expand our orchard and blueberries, we're gonna do that along this slope, because this is really sloped here. We'll be able to um, build out the irrigation because of this. This is a huge step. I don't think they're gonna start building the raised beds today i think that's going to be happening over the next couple days but just the fact that we have lumber on the homestead and we're going to be building out these raised beds is huge because i need to be starting seeds in the next couple days the raised beds are going to be 16 feet by 4 feet that's the same size of the raised beds that we had at the previous homestead and i had 16 of those raised beds originally when we were talking about planning out this garden I was going to have 12 raised beds and an in-ground bed, but as I was thinking about it, I thought that I need to focus on raised beds. It's a lot easier to manage. It's a lot easier to keep weeds down. So we decided to expand the raised bed garden to 20 beds, and then maybe in the future we will do in-ground, but that will be down the road when I feel like I have more time to manage an in-ground garden. So he is starting to build out the first bed, which is incredible. I'm super excited about that and we will just see throughout the day how the progression of it goes. There's gonna be a little bit of trial and error because you all know we're on this slope, and so it's just figuring out how to build the beds so that we can work with the slope and try to reduce the slope in between the beds as much as possible. We do have one more hose bib here and one more right there because that's where the greenhouse is gonna be. The greenhouse is gonna sit right there, and we want to have electric and water to the greenhouse. And then they were able to get the water and the electric to where the future chicken coop is going to be. So we did decide that we are going to put the chickens up on this ridge. You can see a little bit here how right up there there's the ridge. And the chicken coop and big chicken run is going to be right in there. It feels incredible to be out here. I was out here with the baby a little bit. We were just trying to soak in a little bit of vitamin D. And now I'm gonna go inside. I've got some big projects I'm working on inside. I'm making strawberry lemonade concentrate, strawberry granola, and strawberry jam. All from strawberries that we grew on the homestead. Friends, we finished our kitchen shenanigans. We did strawberry lemonade concentrate and strawberry jam. Each one of the landscapers is going home with a strawberry jam and I have to go show you something that they did today that I did not know that they were gonna get to. This is major progress. And Josh needs to come look and approve it. I need to get some shoes on. I'm tempted to take Josh's 
but I'm not going to. I'm gonna go find my own shoes because you know that drives him crazy when I take his shoes. Who else steals their husband's shoes? I can't be the only one, but I'm not gonna do it today. <laughs> can't guarantee that I'm not gonna do it next time, but boys, stay inside. But for today, I found my own shoes. All right, they just left. Each of them, like I said, went home with a strawberry jam from strawberries from this garden, which is incredible. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to show you. So this area is not done at all yet. This eventually is all gonna be road that's gonna attach to this road. It's not gonna be quite as steep. It's probably hard to tell here, but this is pretty steep. But for now, it is what it is. And there's gonna be one more layer on here. But friends, do you see what I see? Oh my goodness. So they asked me to come out and kind of approve so far what's been happening. And they've put a line. They are so detail oriented. So there is a, a line right here that goes all the way down. It's gonna be four or five beds long so that all of the beds are gonna be parallel with this yellow line right here. You'll also see they put one line right here that goes down the hill. So each corner of the box, cause there's gonna be four boxes going down the hill, the top corner is gonna line up with that line. So they're gonna be nice and even going down the hill. You will notice that obviously there's a space down here that is going to have another board on it. It's easier to see here, but this is where there's gonna be more and more layer of cedar around the bottom edge. What we're trying to do here is have this bed and each bed be on the slope so that when we have another bed that's gonna start right here, we can level this space between. So the bed is gonna be level and then we can make the walkway level and the bed will be level, but the slope is gonna happen inside the bed. I don't know if that makes sense. I think it'll make more sense once we have more beds, but we're gonna have one, then a walkway, another bed, a long walkway. This is the wide one. This is the, so that we can drive our side by side between. Another bed, a walkway, another bed, and then we'll have a road down here as well. So that is the progress. As of today, they are, Josh is gonna come out tonight and approve everything just to make sure everything's perfect now I am going to address the elephant in the room we do have right here pressure treated lumber for the posts because those are going in the ground there is controversy whether in raised beds you should put pressure treated lumber I'm not gonna say whether you should do it or you shouldn't do it what I would recommend is you go out and do your research there used to be a way that they would pressure treat them is they would put arsenic in it when they would pressure treat it. And it's been many, many years since they stopped doing that. I'm not gonna start that debate. Uh, we are using it just at the posts. For the main lumber, we are using cedar. And that's just a decision we've decided to do so that we can put posts in the ground and that they're gonna last a long time. This is a big project. I want this to last and stay good for a long time. So that's why we have chose to do that, but you just need to make your own decision whether you're comfortable using pressure treated lumber in your raised to beds. One of the other reasons why we decided to do it is because these posts are going into the ground because we need these beds to stay put. I don't want these beds to wash down the side of the hill and that's why we're doing that. But can you see now how this is gonna look? Can you visualize four more beds here? four more beds here, four beds there, 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 with a greenhouse sitting right back there tucked in that corner. We have a long way to go, but it is starting to come to fruition. I am so just excited. I just keep saying I'm excited, but that's how I feel, I'm excited. Dinner is done, I already made dinner, so we're gonna go ahead inside and enjoy gnocchis, gnocchis that I made last year during pantry challenge to use up the potatoes that we grew in the year before's garden, 2021's garden, I think. Yeah, 2021's garden, plus kale from 2022's garden, onions from 2022's garden, and garlic. This is huge progress. So I will show you what this looks like tomorrow because tomorrow is supposed to be in the high 50s, just like today. 
And so I think that the plan is to continue to maximize this nice weather and work on building those when the weather is holding out on us. I think I'm gonna do some grilling tomorrow because it's supposed to be so beautiful. Today is Thursday. It's the last day of the week that the gardeners are gonna be here. Each of them got to take home some strawberry jam yesterday. It is about, it's almost one o'clock, it's 10 till. Today is a house day for me, cleaning. I really need to get the floors swept and mopped. I need to do laundry, or that's what I've been working on, dishes. Kind of after I do a big canning session or a cooking day, I usually take the next day to do kind of like office computer work slash clean and get the house back ready together. But I wanted to kind of check in and see how far they have gotten today. Um, the whole plan for today is to work on garden boxes. Actually, it's gonna be the whole plan is to work on garden boxes for the foreseeable future until all 20 of them are done. And it could not be a nicer day out here. It's about 58 degrees today. It's sunny and beautiful. I've been trying to kind of come outside and enjoy some of the sunshine and get a little bit of vitamin D as needed. But it looks like, oh gosh, okay. So it takes quite some time to get these boxes in place because they are doing such a fantastic job making sure everything is level and so that they all line up nicely and it doesn't look all cattywampus, especially because this is on a hill. And so, wow. So it takes time to have that precision, which I really appreciate. I really appreciate their attention to detail. So it looks like today, they have got one more in. Last night we had these two in and they have one more built. So the next one that's going in, it looks like they're doing the top row first and then they're gonna work their way down the hill is going to be this one. And I'm gonna show you it going into the ground. So they've already dug one hole. Their original plan was to get the five boxes on the top row built and level and in place and then work on the four boxes going down the hill and get those in place. But what they ended up doing for the long term, I think it was just easier, was they end up building all 20 of the beds and then they spend one entire day and they level everything, which I... the they're still working on that because it's such a big project to get everything level because this is not a level ground by any means. You can see if you're looking at this where the first boxes that were in the, the three boxes are not level at all yet, but where that far box, the farthest box away from us, that's higher up the hill than where they're digging the hole currently. And so to get everything level across that plane is a feat in and of itself. It's definitely something that I am grateful we are having help with because Josh and I were talking about this the other day. This would have taken Josh and I one entire year just to get these garden beds built and in place and level. At our last house, everything was flat and so it was a lot easier. Josh got everything level and he got everything spaced out evenly, but to do with this on a hill takes a special set of skills and I'm grateful that we have the help in order to have this done so that we can have a garden this year. I have my grow room all set up currently. We do that together where we designate a area in the house and we have a grow room but I have not started any seeds and that is something I am gonna be doing in the next couple days. The first seeds that I need to start are some cabbage, cauliflower, and pepper seeds. And the goal is going to be to try to get these boxes and beds filled sooner than the whole overall landscaping and project is gonna be done. The reason we're focusing right now on getting these beds built is so that we can fill them and we can start planting seeds even if the project is not fully done. So the irrigation, the way we plan to have these beds irrigated is there's gonna be drip tape inside the beds that's gonna run along the middle. There's gonna be two, I think, drip tapes along the middle, kind of like the last house. And then 
on the edge of each bed, there is going to be a tube that I can tap into. One of my goals is to have pots and flowers throughout the garden like I did at the last house, but I did not have a way to water them on an irrigation system last at the last house, so I had to hand water them. And I don't have time to hand water. Living in the Pacific Northwest, we're kind of notorious for being wet, but in the summers, we don't get rain. Typically, there's about a three to four month span every year where we maybe get one or two days of rain, and that's it. Typically, the rain we get, we get in the early spring, fall, and winter. And so if something is not irrigated and has to be hand watered, I just, I'm not good about doing that and I kill things. So, so almost everything in pots last year, I killed except for the ones that I had plant, placed the pots strategically around the beds where the irrigation like spewed over into the pot just because the irrigation, like the watering system wasn't contained inside the bed. And so one thing I want for this garden is I want to be able to tap into the irrigation so that when I put pots around the beds that have flowers and just, I want it to be really beautiful, then I can tap into that and I can put a drip line into each pot. And obviously I don't know how to do that yet, the landscapers are going to teach me how to do that and so that I can then show you how I'm going to do that because one thing I envision with this garden is I want it to be very productive with food but I also really want it to be beautiful and flowers is something that I'm really really going to focus on this year and next year and for the years to come so they officially now have five beds built and they we have six feet between each bed going between the beds going along the row, the top row. I have the grill going. We are making dinner on the grill. Well, I actually had it going and then I ran out of propane. So Josh is putting a new propane tank. The landscapers just left and I wanna show you how we're wrapping up this week. Today is Thursday and they are not working tomorrow. They stayed late about an hour and a half because they wanted to take advantage of the sunshine. Wow, they got a lot done. Big changes here, big, big changes. So they have built two, four, six, eight beds so far. There is gonna be 20. And it looks like they have them in the correct spot going down because each corner is supposed to be level with that line. One bed is built, but it does not, it's not in the correct place. And then a couple of the beds down there they are in the correct place, but they are not level yet. You can see this one corner of that last bed is up higher. All of these beds are gonna be nice and level going all the way across. That's why it takes so much time and effort. They are doing a fantastic job. The attention to detail is phenomenal, which I greatly appreciate. Oh my goodness, so we are now in the garden. We are in the garden between two garden beds. You're, you can start to see how how this is coming together and you can actually see a little bit better how much of a hill now that there's something on the hill you can definitely definitely tell that there is a slope to this so right in here is where we're going to work on making this more level definitely you can see it a lot better this way so this one is going to be a little bit harder to level out because it's a wider space as opposed to this walkway, it's a shorter space, so they'll be able to level this out a little bit easier, but this is gonna be very level going between here. Here's another perspective. There's gonna be one more box right here, and that will be the four beds coming down the hill. And then here's perspective of the five beds going across. This is incredible. I am starting seeds this weekend. And now I can just start to visualize where I want to start putting things. A bunch of these beds are going to be perennial beds, so I don't have to plant them every year. Perennials means they come back year after year. Asparagus, strawberries, rhubarb. I want some perennial herbs like sage and rosemary. Those are perennials for us. They, I don't have to plant them every year. And I'm going to start thinking through where I want them. I want to be very strategic on where I plant the perennials. I could transplant them later down the road if I need to, but ideally where I decide to put them is where I want them. 
Some of these beds are gonna be turned into strawberry beds, which are perennials. And I think I want some perennial flowers in these beds as well. Like an entire bed of dahlias or an entire bed of, maybe not peonies, because those take two or three years before they come up to any size. So maybe I'll put my peonies in the beds that are up here. But I'm thinking I want some cut flower perennials in my garden. And one reason I want to do that is because it's going to reduce the amount of work I need to do every single year. And I'm just so excited we're at this point. This is where it starts to become fun, where we can start visualizing and starting to think about putting things in the ground. This is what gets me really excited. Here it is from the other side. So this bed still needs to be worked because it's not level but I'm thinking I want this bed to be my perennial herb bed and a salad bed because it's gonna be the closest to the house. But only time will tell. It's getting cold out here. I've got meat on the grill I need to go take care of. This is a huge step in the right direction and I'm just really excited you're here with me along this journey. So thank you for taking time out of your day to spend time with me as we start to see the actual garden where we're gonna be spending a ton of time together start to come together. So I can smell the chicken, it smells incredible, and I will see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, friends, I will pop a few videos here you can go enjoy between now and my next upload. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Thanks for being here, thanks for being you, and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye, friend.